the three women, which I love to death, right. and um, I think a lot of people do. Yes, absolutely. But um, I also really have been influenced by his bigger movies where there are ensemble casts. And you know, you asked earlier about collaboration and improvisation. What I really liked about him was that he would say, well, you know, this is your character, so you go create the character, and you tell me how they'd dress, and you tell me what they would. And he was always in charge, but he gave them that respect of saying, you know, surprise me, come up with ideas, let's and see if it works. And look at the performances he got out of them. I think Shelley part Duvall. of that, sure, yeah. because they, they, they felt, I mean, much more locked into the character, I think, in a great I think, way. I think it's scary for some actors, which is something that never occurred to me until we filmed, because I told everybody, hey, Go come up with a ten-minute monologue. You know that you're. Car I'm. I'm just going to put the camera on you for ten minutes, and you just talk as if you're in a consciousness-raising session about, you know, you're your character, and you talk about what. And I realized, oh well, they really need a script a lot of the time, and I, I thought that that would be great for them and cathartic, and I think it was ultimately helpful for them to sort of figure out what they thought about this character, because I think a lot of times when you're doing something like that, you're looking to the director to tell you this is what I want, this is what you need to do, this is how it needs to sound and look. And I wasn't so interested in that. I mean, I knew that I was interested in them because I'd cast them and I had a sense of them. And I wanted to explore what they could do. And I wanted them to sort of show me, you know. I wanted it to be an exchange. You and got I some think great you performances that. out of I mean, across the board, everybody is really... Because the film is a quiet film, the characters, uh, and it's, even though it is, in fact, an ashram, a collective of people, a commune, if you will, it's a small one. So the characters have actually quite a bit of screen time individually and they get a chance to develop. And I, I think each one comes across very distinctively and very different and has something to bring to the story, which is really nice. One other aspect, this is an Outfest film, but as I was watching the film, I didn't feel it was necessarily a gay movie or a necessarily even had a uh, necessarily a homosexual context that uh, was overriding in the film. Mm -hmm. I thought it was simply a fact. And it came across as these are simple facts. This could happen. I could easily have plugged this movie into a total heterosexual context. Or, and uh, I find that refreshing. And I'm finding more and more of that in filmmaking. I think it's a confidence level in gay filmmaking. But I'm finding more and more films are now uh, not focusing so much on, and I, I don't want to use the term cliche, but what we've seen repeatedly in the last 20 odd years, even going back to Kenneth Anger, films where it becomes almost a fetishistic focus is the sexuality in the film instead of just being a, one aspect of the film itself. Well, and I think a lot of that is how movies are apprehended, how they're experienced. You know, I was really fortunate uh, at my screening because Kim Yutani, the programmer, she really responded to the film and she introduced it in a way that really sort of gave people a vision of how they could experience it. Because there are things in it that are a little different. And I feel like most movies should have that blessing. They should have someone sort of give them that, that sort of introduction that allows you to experience them in an open, expansive way, rather than this is how you're supposed to feel about this. It's a gay movie. It's a gay identity thing. It's a, so I think some of that is the movie making, but some of it is, is what people come to the audience, to the theater with, their expectations. And, I'm not so interested in that, you know, I just, I feel like, for me, feelings are feelings, and yes, everybody has an experience, but my experience is very different from a lot of the gay people that I know, and vice versa. So, I can get behind that to an extent, and I recognize the value of, of focusing on a sort of one thing as opposed to another, or sort of identifying a point of view that can be uh, seen as sort of an affirmation or whatever, but... I've always felt like an outcast no matter where I've been, so it's hard for me to sort of be, I don't want to be representative of anyone but myself, and that's hard enough. So, um. To me, there was a sort of an outsider feel to much of it, and I studied photography uh, with Todd Walker and Jerry Yulman and other people who, in Central Florida, which I think has that southern vibe of the forest and the woods, too, and I saw a lot of uh, the work looked like it could easily be still art photo work, and the color saturation you got was beautiful in many of the scenes. There was a brightness to the entire film, which was really nice. And it just seemed very atmospheric and haunting. I think the music added a lot to that as well. Um, do you feel that you captured more than you thought you were ever going to get when you were in the filming process? And was there a sense of joy going on as you filmed this? Yeah, I mean, they're in a little pocketed away place. <laughs> you don't have a lot of opportunity for joy on you right. know, a movie shoot because you've got a thousand personalities even on a crew as small as ours. In fact, 
uh, and a crew as small as ours, it almost feels, and a cast as small as ours, it almost feels like their the difference in personalities are magnified because you know there's they're very specific personalities and they have very specific needs and they're just miles away from each other and you're the one that's sort of the conduit for all of them and the liaison. But so yeah, but I mean I was what I was ex I knew that Ryan Parker, who's the director of photography. Um, I will work with him for the rest of my life because he's just, we work really well together. I adore him. He's like a brother to me at this point. Great. Um, and he's brilliant. And he doesn't know he's brilliant, so it's a little easier to work with him. You know, right. he, he just doesn't realize that he is just really, truly gifted, you know. Well, he's a and, keeper, definitely. Yeah, and we, you know, but that said, we had very specific conversations. You know, R Ryan is a tech geek. So Ryan's most important consideration is, well, I want this microphone, and I want this, you know, and mine was, well, this is my money. Right. So I want, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure we keep down the cost. So we had very specific conversations about how the film was going to look, mm -hmm. and I didn't want a lot of setups, I didn't want a lot of lights, because those cost money and they take up time. Right. And I knew what the camera could do, because I had watched his footage. I knew that it captured light beautifully and color, really beautifully and sometimes when you add the lights the color goes away a little bit it's right. less saturated and you had a lot of black and white footage with a, a great level of contrast that was really nice too that segued great when the film goes into its color episodes which part of them I think are uh, dream oriented and then um, that was an interesting element to the film as well so. so Ryan and I had really specific talks about you know I, I don't want lights I know that that excites you to have lights but I don't want them I really you know I really wanted to just focus on what that camera could do on its own. It's very portable. It's you know you could take it anywhere. And um, uh, I like photography a lot too. And I have tons of books. I'm obsessed cool. with it. And so yeah, I was definitely inspired. So you were saying basically that the film's done on a budget, but it doesn't look like it's compromised by the budget. And that's always refreshing because I do get independent film, you know, as, as a film commentarist you must say critic, I do get uh, work that's been done that just looks like it's always uh, on the cheap, and I end up going, God, I just wish they had more money. Whereas this film, I don't think that hurts you in any way, really. Well, I, I always am surprised by that sort of line of thinking in filmmakers, because I feel like I don't, and you're not supposed to say this, because the, the rule is that you need millions of dollars to make a movie, and the truth is you don't if you're willing to make compromises and you're willing to rely on your imagination. I feel like you, the wealth that you need is your imagination. And I feel like in some ways, when you make a movie the way everybody's supposed to make it, you immediately cut off half of your potential because everything's geared towards doing it how it's supposed to be done and looking like it's supposed to look. And, um, you know, you're not open to options anymore as much. Right. And You're creating for the marketing department. Yeah, and I knew that Ryan could shoot beautifully, and I, I believed in myself enough to know that I would make something out of it because I edit when I write novels. You know, that's a big part of it, is to make, is to capitalize on your limitations and to, you know, hide your shortcomings. And, so. <laughs> well, you did a great job hiding any shortcomings because I didn't notice them. Thanks. We've been talking to Brian Parra. His film is The Way I See Things. It's uh, featured at Outfest this year. And uh, you can go to outfest.org for more information. It's going on for another week or so. And the, the movie's at MySpace. It has a MySpace page. So if you MySpace wanna, page is? It's uh, www.myspace.com, Brian Para movie, B-R-I-A-N. He is in Paul, E-R-A. Um, Movie.com? Movie. Or just for movie, that's it, I think, for MySpace. Yeah, right? I think so. <laughs> Get back to it. Still working on the web thing. <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? But anyway, it's been great chatting with you, and like Thanks. I said, I really enjoyed the film, and look forward to your Thanks, next work. Thanks, I'm glad. Thank you. Great.